All right, you ready? We got 14 words. I think they're pretty hard, but hopefully I have definitions, pictures, and sentences for you so you are able to understand these words a little bit better. Make your English conversation a little bit better. You'll understand the things you read a little bit better in English, and isn't that the goal? Try to get better in English? Let's do it. This is so serious, I need to put on my glasses. All right, 14 words, and they appear on the board. I'm sure you've seen them if you're in my class. If you're watching this on my other YouTube channel, well, you haven't seen these because you're not in my classroom. But those are the 14 words we are going to talk about. Yeah, wait till we get to manure. That's a fun one. But I do have a Quizlet to share with you so you can see these words. And like I said, I have a sentence for each one. So let's talk about the first one rattled rattled it, it can be a verb which is something you do or it can be an adjective which describes a noun so rattled means frightened or confused or it can mean oh hang on i, I made a you're right back or it can mean to make a sound. So that right there is a baby rattle. So there are two definitions for this. One, to be scared or confused. The other, to make a sound. And the sentence I have for you, it's the sound one. So the loud thunderstorm rattled the windows in the house. If you want to use it like confused, you might say, wow, that English test was so hard. When I finished it, I felt a little rattled. So those are two ways to use rattled. And of course, it can be a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. So rattled, starting off a little hard, I think. The next one is steady. And I can't promise that is any easier, but hopefully with the definition, hopefully with the picture, it'll all come together. So steady means not changing or moving quickly. So if you look at that picture, the boy right there, he's playing a game. We call it Jenga in English. And it's, I think that's the name of the game. So it's probably the same in any language but you have to have a steady hand if you're going to play Jenga. And remember, steady means not changing or moving quickly. So the sentence I have for you is the little boat stayed steady on the calm lake. So if something's calm, if water is calm, it's not moving. There aren't any waves, so steady. Oh no, I just got a message that my battery is going to die. I think we have enough to get through the rest of this lesson. Instill. I think this might be the hardest one of the 14. Whoops. This is the sentence. But it means to add slowly over time. But it doesn't mean like putting gas into a car you don't instill gas and if you're eating slowly you don't instill the food into your body it's more like an attitude so at the bottom there hopefully this sentence will help teachers work to instill knowledge in their students um, you might have a, a coach and the coach might work hard to instill what could they instill pride maybe feeling good about yourself that i think is the hardest one because when you look at the definition to add slowly over time 
Think of it as an attitude. Okay. Scraggly. One of my favorite ones. Now, if you look at this person in the picture, I would definitely consider their hair to be scraggly. Unfortunately, you know, because I'm losing my hair or I'm going bald, it's hard for me to look scraggly. Maybe here with my beard, if I let it grow out and it was all like different lengths, if the hair was different lengths and messy, it might look scraggly. So the definition over there, not neat, a little messy. The tree had scraggly branches that looked like they needed a trim. And if you know that word trim in English, it means just, just a little cut. So you could trim your fingernails or you could trim your beard if you have a beard. You could trim your hair, just a little cut. The next one, one of my favorite ones here because uh, it's about food delectables. So here it's used as a noun, delectables. It can be used as an adjective, adjective too. If food is delectable, it's good to eat. But delectables are delicious foods, treats, usually something sweet, not always. But here's the sentence. At the picnic, we enjoyed a variety of delectables, like sandwiches. And cookies. Hope that helps. Stout. Oh, what happened here? We got an ad? Sam's Club. Let's get rid of that ad. I have the free version, so sometimes we will get ads. Stout. Kind of short. Kind of fat. But sometimes it's not like fat fat. It's just like maybe like kind of sturdy. So I have a sentence for you where stout isn't as bad. It's definitely short though, but not always fat. Sometimes like we also have the word stocky, which means like if a football player is stocky, like American football player, you know, they're kind of strong. So stout can be not an insult, even though that definition sounds like it. At the picnic, that's delectables. I already read that one. The strong and stout superhero saved the day. A lot of S's in that sentence. The strong and stout superhero saved the day. Do you know about shadowing? Sometimes when I'm doing these lessons, you can also shadow what I'm saying. And that just means to repeat what I'm saying or say it in your head to try to work those muscles because whatever language you speak at home, your, your first language, you might not have the same sounds that we do. So sometimes shadowing can be helpful. I'll read it one more time. The strong and stout superhero saved the day. Stout. The next one. Padded. I like this one padded. It means to tap gently with an open hand. So padded, padded. Be careful. You might not want to do this to a person, pat them on the head, maybe pat them on the shoulder. Hey, nice job. But if you pat them on the head, that could be kind of insulting. Maybe a little kid, but certainly not an adult. Good job. I think in any culture, that could be a little insulting. All right, so look at this sentence. She patted the seat next to me, asking me to sit down. You might see that sometimes. Hey, I mean, I can't show you the seat here with this camera, but they might pat the seat next to them. Hey, I have a seat for you. Or like in the picture here, I feel relaxed when I pat my dog on top of his head. You can see that picture. That dog in the picture looks very happy. If you're listening to this on the podcast, I apologize. You can't see the pictures. But hopefully you are still understanding the words I am explaining. Squint. Again, a picture can say it all. 
right? If you look at that person in the picture, their eyes are, are pretty closed. So the definition of squint means to look at with partly closed, you should say eyes there, partly closed eyes. So if you look at that person there, he's definitely squinting. Maybe he can't quite see what is in the distance. We'll do bifocals in a minute. Sentence down below. In the bright sunlight, she squinted her eyes to see better. Some people say, I squint all the time, but I promise I can open my eyes really wide. But most of the time I'm squinting. As I get older, I have to squint more, especially if I don't have my glasses. The next one, bifocals. Anytime you see the word bi in English, think two. And that is the case here. I think this is a rather long definition, but it's not that difficult. So eyeglasses that have two different sections. And you can see in the picture, one for looking into the distance or far away, and one for looking close up things that are near to your eyes, like reading. So these are not bifocals. This in the glass part, we call those lenses, lenses. Some people have um, compact lenses, right? It's just the little, the little ones and they will put into their eyes. I may get those one day. I have an eye appointment on November 1st. So my eyes are getting bad. I don't think I'll need bifocals though. So the bifocals would be helpful if I can't see to read, which is true. And if I can't see to drive, I might need bifocals, but I think I just need readers. We might call glasses in English if you just need them to read. So these are readers, but I just got them at the drugstore. I didn't have to go see a doctor for them. But how about this, grandpa? So it must be an older gentleman. Grandpa wears bifocals, which help him read and see far away. There you go. Not too bad, I hope. Bifocals. What about this one? Squawked. Make this a little smaller. Look at that. You almost always hear this with a bird. But the definition is a loud, harsh, screeching sound squat. Sometimes when people are angry, you might say, let's see, ah, the teacher squawked at me when I handed in my assignment late. Sometimes we use it for when people are mad and they might have a high voice. Screeching, it's, it's, it's close. So the parrot squawked loudly, making everyone laugh. How are we doing on battery here? Oh, I got 4% battery. We might have to do two parts for this, or maybe I can uh, hurry. How many we got left? We got two left. Okay, let's do it. Uh, flushed is the next one. Flushed. So that means to be red in the face, maybe because you are embarrassed. And of course, if your skin is darker, then you probably don't turn pink. But if your skin is kind of like mine, if you are embarrassed, those cheeks, we call these cheeks, this is your jaw, those cheeks might get a little pink. After running, her cheeks were flushed and pink. Also might happen after exercising. Man, I'm hurrying, sorry, we're almost done here. Beak, that's not too bad. It's a bird's mouth, not too bad, hopefully. The bird's beak is sharp and strong for cracking nuts. Now this one, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little hard. And what makes this one hard is actually pronouncing it, noxious. Noxious is how you say that one. It's got an X in it, I don't know, noxious. But it means harmful, poisonous, lethal. If something is lethal, it could kill you. So smoke from the fire created a noxious smell in the air. Whoever is near that fire, they better be careful. Noxious, it could, if it's really bad, 
it could kill you. So who knows, maybe some kind of chemicals were in that fire. And the last one, not my favorite. I don't even have a definition there for you. Just a pitcher. But manure is basically animal poop or crap. Yeah, but it really makes plants grow well. So here's the sentence. The farmer used manure to help his plants grow big and healthy. 15 minutes, 14 words, about a word a minute. We did not run out of battery. I still have 3%. All right.